Mae tyddyn teg fferm llysiau agroecol egol. Um, dan i'n wneud box llysiau am um, 170 uh, aelod ar hyn o bryd. Um, a dan i'n, dan i'n cael uh, siop bach ar y fferm uh, i gwerthu llysiau i'r, i'r cymunedol lleol. So, uh, tyddyn teg was um, it was run under a different name as Tithin Beth. It was run as um, a vegetable farm by a couple uh, for about 20 years prior to us getting hold of it. Um, the couple wanted to retire and sell up and several of, the, of our sort of founding members um, managed to buy the farm off them um, they, using a loan from, from one of the founding members' families. And we've run it as a, as a cooperative since then, so there are 11 of us now. There's been a bit of turnover since we started, um, but there are some of the original members still here. We grow food direct for the local community. You know, we've got about 170 households that get a veg box from us every week and lots of local people come and use the shop as drop-ins as well, which is really important to us for several reasons. One, you know, our local village just lost its only, its only shop, so now we're the only shop within walking distance for lots of people from Bethel. Um, two, it's so important these days that people both recognise where their food comes from, can learn about where it comes from, you know. These polytunnels let us grow tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, aubergines, like lots of lovely summer fruiting crops, which have just about finished now. You can kind of see the last of them on the left here um, that we're going to clear very soon and turn it around. This side has now been turned around, so this was all like cucumbers and courgettes and things. Um, but now it's in winter crops, um, so that's the other function of the polytunnels is to like have a lot of food going through winter. Um, so, well, this one is now lettuce landia, so this should keep us going until April and lettuces really on the scheme. To me, agroecology, it, it means kind of, you know, taking an understanding of the interaction of living things and trying to use that to, to, to sort of steer how you do your farming and how you manage your crops. Brassicas can be quite vulnerable to uh, damage from caterpillars, from cabbage butterflies. Um, if you, if you go in there and spray herbicides, uh, pesticides, um, you end up killing a lot of beneficial insects as well. So I think like the agroecological approach is to, to sort of understand that these um, crop pests have natural predators and we want those natural predators to do our pest control for us. We use municipal waste compost on this area I'm standing in, in the polytunnels. Um, so they have a sort of annual top dressing of municipal waste compost. Um, because that's essentially a, a waste product or a byproduct from, from the council, our local council's you know, garden, and, garden and kitchen waste recycling, we get that pretty cheaply. We get that for nine pounds a tonne delivered. Um, and we probably use 120 tonnes a year. So there's, there's about you know, 1,100 pounds of, of input costs there. Um, but off that, we probably, I think, between the tunnels and this field I'm standing in, we probably produce something like uh, £75,000 worth of, of crops out of those. But the input costs overall are maybe a couple of thousand pounds for, for this area. Um, so, so really, like labour is our, is our main cost for our growing, um, which is, in some ways is good for us because that's, that's our wages. We have uh, volunteering days and big community dinners and various bits and bobs that we do, which are just really important opportunities to bring people together and focus around the things that are important to us, really, which is good foods and good vegetables and bringing people into that. So we run um, open days, so that's when people can come and they can book onto a tour and we'll show them around the farm, talk to them about how we grow veg, answer people's growing questions because like some of our customers, funnily enough, also have their own kind of grows and like grow stuff on allotments or in their gardens. Um, and also it's open to any member of the public, you don't have to be a customer here to come and like talk to us about growing vegetables. We've been running the trainee programme for about four years and we've had, I think, 13 or 14 people through it and from that we've had a couple of people go and set up their own projects in various different parts of the UK. Uh, we've actually taken on a few of our old trainees as co-op members here um, which was fantastic and really lovely to keep them on and we've got a few people who have got jobs in sort of horticulture and food growing in various different places. Um, and one person has gone to do sustainable flower production actually just outside Chester. We've learned how to farm um, like on a field scale, on a market garden scale, in polytunnels, 
Um, I've learned how to raise a plant from, from seed to plate and um, how to market, how, yeah, like roots to market and what it means to run a, a shop and a veg scheme. Meeting customers in the shop, talking about the produce, explaining to them about how it's grown, you know, they can learn a little bit more about where it comes from and getting people really excited about vegetables. And also just reminding people that we can grow really good, healthy, nutritious, sustainable food in North Wales. You know, a lot of people presume you can just have sheep and cows here, and sheep and cows do great, but so do vegetables, which <laughs> a lot of people don't necessarily know about. <laughs>